What's going on everyone and welcome to the fish room. Uh, today's video I'm moving some plecos around so I thought I'd show you catching those, uh, good nets to use, some custom little tricks you can do. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the fish and start catching. So first tanks I want to show you here are, are right next to each other, are side by side. These are 20 long just running off a sponge filter. I got some guppies and some bristlenose plecos. Uh, this tank here, I've been growing out my spot pleco, as you can see the one back there. Um, they're a blue eye uh, lemon pleco, and they're getting this black spawning on them kind of randomly. So I want to line breed these guys, uh, try to get um, some more babies just like that, because I think it's something new. I've never seen them before. Uh, see how the genetics work, if I can recreate this fish or not. Um, but they're starting to breed, but I think I have too many in this tank. Um, so there's probably like four pairs in here. Uh, so the plans are that I want to move one pair into this tank. And I caught almost all the plecos out last week, but I still got a few stragglers. So I'll go ahead and catch those guys out first. Um, just some baby plecos I've been growing out. And uh, I removed the parents months ago and just been feeding them. Um, so I have some stragglers left in there. I got to catch out, sell them, move them to a sale tank. Um, but I want to move a pair over so I can kind of selectively pick the male and female. And then for this tank, I want to add some more of these flower pots. Um, kind of like my little breeding cage. This is what I like best for plecos. Uh, it gives a lot of area, and normally they won't kick the eggs out of it. Um, but there's so many in here, I've been finding eggs on the bottom of the tank, so they're breeding. Um, I had a video on that. Maybe I'll post it at the end part uh, after this is all said and done. Um, you can check that out after this. Um, but they are breeding, but I'm not getting any babies yet. So... Hopefully by me moving them around, adding some more caves, uh, we'll get some more success. Um, but let's go ahead and catch some of these younger guys out so I have a place to put the new pair. We'll start by catching these babies and whenever you're catching plecos, it's important to use a fine mesh net. Um, this is like my go-to net I use here. It's larger, I think it's like a 7 or 8 inch. Um, I'll try to find a link for this and post it in the description so you can find these nets. Because uh, anytime you're buying them, if it's not the right kind, uh, the plecos seem to get caught in the net. Because um, they do have little bristles, bristle nose pleco obviously, and you want to kind of let the pleco catch itself. Um, if you have a sponge filter or a piece of wood they're on, you can just pick it up and then put the net underneath it. Um, but if you're going to catch them against the glass, just like this guy, the best thing to do is let the fish swim into the net. Because um, if you just pull up, you're usually gonna, he's going to get away every time. You don't want to like smash him or anything crazy. So just getting them against the glass, just like that. Wait till they swim off. You can kind of move the net left and right to kind of encourage them to keep swimming. Um, but then they're going to always swim down. So make sure you don't have any air pockets or anything like that. And there's just a little baby pleco right there. So kind of a bunch of different sizes. I actually think the plecos I was growing out started to breed. So um, I have some real tiny guys in here. And they were just kind of breeding under the acrylic yarn. Um, very commonly my plecos will do that because it's so dense. Uh, it has a lot of like fish waste. And see one just swam in the net right there. You swam on the side. Um, but I'm going to try to lift up this sponge filter and get a bunch at once. Because uh, that's kind of your best shot before you're going around a whole bunch. Uh, get under your sponge filter or your piece of wood, whatever you have. And get your net there, then lift them up. I'm not going to take too much time doing this, but we'll go through. Catch the remainder plecos. There's probably only a few here. I'll wring that sponge filter out to help clear the tank. And then we'll go ahead and catch out some of those breeders. And it's always important just to be patient. Just like that, he came off and we caught this guy and he might even be a spot plucker. It's the first time I've been in this tank to look around. That's actually pretty cool. See that little, um, I don't know if you can see it or not. First time I've noticed this one, but he's got some spotting on his side. And this is, it looks like an albino. So sorry, I'm not even getting him in the camera shot. See a little uh, markings on his side. Uh, that's pretty cool. So maybe I'll put him in another tank, grow him up. I thought the spotted plecos were only, sorry, I'm totally missing the camera shot, were only in the blue eyes. Um, so that's pretty cool to have an albino um, carrying that genetic. So I'm going to move them into a different tank, let them grow out, and we'll see what we get uh, in the next few months here. If it keeps that spotting, um, all the better. Maybe I'll cross them to like a long fin albino. We'll see what we get. Um, but I only have a few plecos in here. I thought I had like a dozen or so, maybe half a dozen. Um, but we got, I think, three or four in here, and then the fourth one I just put in this tank above. Um, up here I'm breeding some uh, super reds. You can see the male 
kind of the top of his bristle. Random albino that I was growing out. Uh, she's bigger now, so I actually move her uh, so she doesn't breed with him because I have a red female in here for him. But there's that spotted pleco. You can see its eyes kind of glaring and how it has that red color. Um, so you know it's an albino, not a blue eyed. Uh, even the super reds I have right next to them, they look like almost a blue eyed. So it's kind of cool. Keep messing with the genetics of these guys. Um, growing these out, I uh, have a few ready to sell. Uh, a bunch of people on a waiting list for these guys. I've probably sold 30 or 40 of them and I'm starting to run out of uh, ones of big enough size. The one to the right there, probably big enough to sell and it's starting to get warmer, which is nice. Um, but I'd rather wait a few more weeks, maybe a month. If they're not in a rush, I'm not in a rush to sell these guys too small. Anytime I'm doing a breeder tank or kind of almost restarting a tank, I try to clean my sponge filters. Kind of just keeps it easy, uh, just a good routine. Um, since I have this rack system, it doesn't give me a lot of space, but if you have like a short container, you can lift up that sponge filter and already it's filling out a lot of dirty water. Um, so if that doesn't go back in the tank, it'd be even better. Um, so that's why this is helpful. And this is kind of just a real quick cleaning. I always have a bucket of the chlorinated water that's at fish room temperature right here. So I can just pour in clean water. It gives me something to wring out the sponge. Um, whenever you're cleaning your sponge filter, use the chlorinated water at the same temperature or just tank water. Um, you can get even cleaner by using uh, fresh water and not the chlorinated. And then this will just, just slide out. There's a top and a bottom. One thing is kind of cool or important. Whenever you're putting these back together, you see these little grooves at the bottom. Um, whenever you connect it right here, this has grooves as well. You want to make sure that those line up to get maximum airflow. If you ever have a sponge filter where, and I've done this before just through trial and error, where this isn't blowing, like the air is blowing very strong, um, but once you plug in the air line, it's not uh, for your sponge filter. Sponge filter could be clogged, may need cleaned. It may be too fine of a sponge filter. Um, but I found that you want to line those up because if I line, if I don't have them lined up, you can see this grooves a little bit uh, and they're sideways, it's not going to get maximum airflow. So make sure when you clean this out, just kind of wring it in there, uh, get any debris out of there and you want to get those two lines uh, to match up right here, you know, get better airflow. So that's a little uh, trick for your sponge filters. And then you want to just wring these out real well. Um, more fish you have in a tank, you almost see it starting to cloud. Um, but all you do is just wring it out right in here. Uh, if you can do two, three buckets of it, you can do it in a bag, whatever's easiest. I always do it in a uh, bucket. I can get more water. And then all of that water right there is basically like a water change. I'm pulling out um, old fish waste, anything like that. And I'm saving all the good bacteria on the sponge. You never want to take it under a sink and rinse it out uh, using just sink water. Because uh, all the chlorine in there is going to kill your bacteria. And it's going to make this sponge recycle you get an ammonia spike and then when plugging in the top same thing you find those grooves line them up snap it all together and the sponge filter is ready to go so dump out all that dirty water this tank basically has got a water change and it'll start to clear up more for us and we can add these uh, new breeders to the tank so I'm just kind of taking a close look at these guys for the first time with you uh, I try not to get in and out of my pleca tanks too often because I don't want to disrupt them um, usually when I go in there and I try to move stuff around, I normally find babies and I mess them up. So that pleco right in the middle here uh, with the marking on his head uh, seems to be a female. Uh, early on I had some small bristles I thought it might turn into a male, but so far it's been kind of holding like a female. So I'm going to catch that one out, put it into the breeder tank, kind of check its belly. Because right now it's hard to tell maybe if it's a submissive male. I don't know if that really works with the bristle nose plecos. I think they always grow the bristles. but kind of like African cichlids that whenever you get a male by itself uh, becomes more dominant maybe it'll start showing more of those bristles over the next few months um, but he's old enough now that he should be showing so I'm gonna catch him out for sure move him to this next tank and look for a good male form with the most spotting I can find here looks to be two really nice females uh, I'm gonna select the one that I showed before to move to this tank and the other one here I caught them at the same time, so check a look at take a look at those plecos. So that's a blue eyed lemon spot pleco, um, maybe one of the first of its kind. I don't know if anybody's breeding them. Um, I've seen a couple pictures from other people have shared with me that they find these guys, but look at how cool these plecos are. Um, the one that's to the left that we're gonna put in there, and look at that blue they have almost in their scaling. So it's a really cool fish. I'm excited to have these guys and breed them. Um, if I get some babies, they'll definitely be on the website in the future at biancosfish.com. Um, ignore those two random guppies in the middle. 
but I'm gonna go ahead, move her into the tank, find a nice male for her, and then this one's gonna go back in the tank with another male, and I'm gonna kind of get my numbers lower on the breeder tanks to kind of selectively breed and get some more activity without um, them disrupting each other. And there she goes. And this tank's just gonna get a little uh, lid with a breeder pot. Uh, it's a flower pot that I use for breeding. And I'll sink that down in there. Usually put it close to some uh, moss or some acrylic yarn that they can kind of hide around it and then sneak in and out of that cave and feel safe. And they want to be in that cave or next to it. So that kind of helps the male and female stay close to each other, uh, but also give them a little bit of distance if they want it. So let's go ahead and find her a male. I caught a male and he just swam out. Um, he's not going to be a breeder for me, at least for this spot pleco project, but he's a really nice uh, blue eyed lemon pleco. So I might set up a tank just for them to breed um, with a different female. But as you can see at the beginning of that shot, he was stuck in the net. It's very important when you're catching plecos not to fight them out of the net, especially for the adults. Um, you wanna put them in a container of water, you wanna let the net just sit there, and in due time, they will always swim out of that net. The more you try to fight with them, if you fight for a few seconds and you try to get the pleco out, they'll just stick their bristles out and they're gonna sit there even longer and they're gonna get stressed out. So just put the net in the water, make sure you're using that soft, uh, fine mesh net, and then just set it in there, let them swim out on their own time. As you can see right there at the beginning of it, that's exactly what he did. And he doesn't have any of the spotting, but he carries similar genetics, and that is just an awesome looking fish. So definitely looking forward to breeding the lemon plecos. Uh, I've been producing them on accident because I had some old genetics of a female that I bought from a store, grew it out, let it breed with another albino and I carried, they carried a lot of blue eyes and I didn't even notice until they started getting bigger and I really took a close look at them. Because um, the albinos are cool, I like them, but the blue eyes are just so much nicer. Uh, in general, I don't like that they have any albino fish, whether it be guppies or plecos. I personally don't like the pink eyes as much and I think it's just, I don't know, it's a personal preference, but um, that's a nice male. We might set up a tank for him, but we're gonna keep looking, try to find a male um, with more spotty on him, or at least any spotty. But I just wanted to show you this guy and how to let them swim out of that net without kind of fighting them. Because um, very important when you're catching plecos to kind of let them do it on their own time. Kind of let them catch themselves, let them swim out of the net themselves. Uh, the less you kind of fight that fish, uh, the better it's going to be, the less stress it will get, and less chance you are going to injure the fish. I decided to catch them all out so I could take a close look at all these guys uh, before I select my next breeders. Um, there's a little bit of a glare, sorry we're kind of fighting it, but Good example to see here that the different um, coloration. So some of these guys, like this one back here, is more, I would call it like a blue eye leucistic. Um, so it has the blue eyes, but the fish is more of a white color. And then this would be more of a blue eye lemon pleco where they have that yellow, uh, yellow color, really cool fish. Um, none of my males seem to have any of the spotting, so Looks like I have two males, is what I turned out with, and I just picked these guys out as I was catching them um, from little babies. So I'm looking for uh, not crooked backs. This female here actually has a crooked back, um, which is unfortunate. I can still sell her, I can keep her. I could breed her, but I have enough to select from that I'm not going to have to do that. Um, so I'll probably sell her. I know once I kind of start out and I'll work with this project, uh, there'll be more calls in the babies. Um, but that's still a nice fish, she's healthy but not something I want to breed. And if I didn't look in the tank and actually catch them out, I may have not found that today. Um, so I'm going to be using this male here in the tank. He's going to go right back in there. And this guy's going to go with the female we already selected. And they're moving around a whole bunch, but it's all right. So we're going to put this female here. Uh, it might be a young male, so I'm going to give it another female too. That female with the spot. And then I have another one. I believe it's this girl here. She has the most lemon, um, no spotting, but still full fish. So I'll give him those two females uh, for one of the males, and he's got a little bit of a darker eye. So that's kind of cool. It's almost like a spot on his eye. We'll see if that turns into more spotting, um, but kind of a cool, sorry, I keep looking at the fish and not at the camera. So we're getting, uh, we're just jumping around. This one might be a young male, super small bristles. I hope it's a female. I'm not too sure just yet, but we're gonna go ahead put these guys in pairs and trios and then we're gonna keep moving forward with the video just want to share with you guys what I was doing um, as always I'm just jumping around the fish room sharing what I'm doing so 
not really sure what we'll call this, just catching some pleco, setting up some breeders. Um, really cool genetics in these fish and super easy to breed. For anybody keeping or bre especially breeding fish, uh, it's very important to keep records of everything. Whether you have a notebook, you write everything down, you have a tank or two, or whether you have multiple tanks like I do and you write on the tanks. Um, I use just these paint sharpies here. Uh, really nice, you can write on the tank. I just wrote down there, I rewrote my guppies. Uh, when I added them and I add, added to it the uh, trio on 4.6, they are the lemon blue eye spot pleco. Helps me keep track of things. You don't have to look into every tank uh, to find what it is. You can kind of just check out the names. Keeps good records and then you can kind of see how fast things grow, how often they breed, all that good stuff. And whenever you got to do something new or you change up the tank, all you need is a flat razor blade. Go ahead, scratch right off the glass and you're good to go uh, with your next project or whatever else is going on. We're gonna catch one more pair of plecos out of a tank, but I figured I'd give a quick little break and show you a cool trick with your nets. Um, like I said, you wanna use this um, fine mesh net to catch plecos. Here's it still in the wrapper. Uh, it's the easy catch uh, nylon, and it's the soft fine mesh. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy some more of these. I feel like I can find them online. I bought some from a pet store, um, cause you never know when you buy them. Uh, I forgot what the description was for these guys. Uh, so make sure I get the right thing, right dimensions. Uh, cause sometimes you gotta see it in person and kind of feel the net to know. This is something, your typical fish net that I don't want to use for plecos, uh, but I love the length. So I bought two of these nets. Um, here's still the packaging and this is how big it was when I bought it. So way too long. I can't get into any tanks. I can't get in and out uh, and actually catch fish with this, but I love the type of net. Um, so a good way to kind of customize or do a little DIY. It takes like two minutes. I figured I'd show you guys and I thought it was kind of cool. Didn't want to do a video just for it, um, but this net was this net right here. Um, so I got to take the packaging off, but all I did is you can cut down at the bottom of this and the nets can be customized to length. Um, whenever you look at any net, you can pull off this little tubing right here and then they're just going to bend the net like this and connect it. So this is how the manufacturer had it. Uh, just kind of connects there and you put over this tubing. Uh, it's almost like rubber tubing for airline, but it's a little bit thicker. Um, so all you have to do is I'm going to do it on this one. I'm going to cut it the same length right there, untwine that, and remake it, and we can. I'll show you how to do that. Hopefully this isn't boring, guys, but I figured I'd just show you anyways. Um, so I'm going to use my pliers here, cut it at the same length so these guys match up. And it is kind of hard to break through these. Um, just use it a couple times, kind of corner it, uh, work your way through that metal. There you have it. And instead of just having a weird short net like this with no handle, I can't hang it. Um, I'm going to just untwine this right here, and then I'm going to make this same design. Once you have the net all separated, these are all gonna be cut to different lengths. Uh, one being the shortest, which we can do right here. That's gonna be our opposite side. These two will connect and the one will be slightly shorter and the other one's gonna stay long so we can uh, wrap it all the way around. So connect these two right here and then loop it around like so that you can uh, re-add this tubing, slide it all the way through and you're gonna kind of backtrack this. So go all the way over so you don't have any sharp edges and you can make your own handle. Slide that in there all the way around. And then you're going to lift it up, slide it back. And there you have it, guys. Kind of customize your own net. Uh, any length you guys need. If you want to make a really short net so you can get your hand in the tank on a small tank. Whatever you want to do. I thought it was kind of a cool do-it-yourself project where instead of having this net that's way too long, you can't even use it. Uh, you can customize any size net you want to the length. Getting back to the fish though, uh, here's another breeding for profit tank I have. Uh, I have some really nice adult bristlenose nose plecas in here. I've been meaning to show, but I didn't want to do a video strictly for them. Uh, kind of a theme of this video. A lot of things I wanted to show, but I didn't want to do solely for one video. Kind of just jumping around showing you guys some stuff between the tricks for the net, uh, breeding, kind of moving fish around, all that good stuff to set up. Uh, but we're going to take a closer look at this tank. I have a ton of baby plecas in here and something I like to do whenever I'm breeding these fish, I'll let them breed for a few months uh, once the tank is full of babies and as you can see in here I have a lot of commons, a lot of long fins and even some albinos in here. Um, I'll show you the parents and the one male is just really impressive so I want to take a close look at him, we'll pull him out of the tank, he's actually going to get moved out today. Because um, like I said, I'll fill the tank up with a lot of babies and I like to move the parents uh, to a new breeding tank where I'll kind of uh, stop breeding them for a short period of time until I can grow these up a little bit more. Um, when the parents are gone, uh, you're not getting continuously new babies that are still really small. 
and it gives these guys some more space and food to grow. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and catch those out and then this will just be a grow out tank with all the babies. Here I'm using my uh, typical flower pot with a hole in the side. This one's a lot larger though, uh, so it's hard to tell, but most of my uh, flower pots are like the four, the four and a half inch. Um, this is like a six inch flower pot. Um, the males are a lot larger, like I said, and I wanted to give them something different to try to breed in. And they've been breeding this tank pretty well for me. Even though there's a pretty big opening, it's not a real small tight cave like most people suggest. Um, I've had them breed under my acrylic yarn, like I said, or even in this very large flower pot. Um, but let's get to it. Let's catch these guys out and take a look at some of the adults. So here I have a male and two females, and these guys are just doing awesome. Um, if I go back and look at the tank, there's got to be two to three hundred baby pluckers in that tank. Uh, so you can see the size of the male. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. This is my hand here. Um, he's a good five inches or so. Really nice long fins. Really good bristles on his nose. And those two females are just kind of standard fin, um, but they're very large, uh, super fat, uh, just mature bristle nose pluckers. Um, so these guys here, if I put them in a new tank, and she's actually like sucking on his fin, I'll move her away. Uh, but if I put these guys in a new tank, they'll probably breed within a week or two, and they'll have hundreds of babies. So. Having a pair and really growing them up, uh, whether you grow them up separately and you get the females real fat, introduce them to a mature male, uh, they'll breed almost right away. Or we can just grow them up together and they'll gradually breed more and more and have uh, more eggs every time they spawn. But I thought this Pleco was just really nice, very impressive fins, um, hard to capture on camera, but in person this fish is just really beautiful. Uh, so I'm gonna try to pair them up with a female long fin or maybe like a super red, something that's a little bit more exotic, I guess you could say, or rare. Uh, not just your standard females, but something at his size, I really have to match up with a female. His size are slightly smaller. You wanna make sure that the male's a little bit bigger, uh, that you can kind of control the female, um, but you also can't put him with too small of a female because then they just won't breed, and if they do, he's gonna beat them up. Um, but these were a really good match for him. Uh, I might put him in another tank, let him breed, but uh, they're having about half black long fin uh, babies and then there's some randomness in there. Uh, but if I can breed into a red or maybe in the future like a uh, more colorful fish or better finage, uh, I can really recreate more and more nice babies each time. Uh, so I'm going to look for a pair for him. But for now they're probably going to go into some mixed tank of a bunch of holdback breeders till I can find the right female for him. I'm going to start to wrap this video up, but right here you can see some babies of a variety of color and also a super red male. I'm really a big fan of the reds as of recently. Uh, I've never been able to work with them because I didn't have the stock, but I got myself I think 8 or 10 baby, baby reds um, almost a year ago, maybe 9 months ago, and I've been growing them out, finally starting to breed them and selling them online. Uh, right now they're currently uh, on a waiting list. Uh, if you're looking for any of these plecos, the black um, long fin plecos I have available, um, check out my website at biancosfish.com. You guys can find my contact information there, but these guys are great. I'm really trying to get some more size on them and obviously just build up my numbers. Because um, a lot of my females for these red plecos have been staying around three inches. I'd like to get them up to around four and five inches where I have big females. I like those commons I just showed you because they're going to grow a lot faster because their max size is bigger and they'll produce more babies when they're larger like that. Um, so I thought I'd show you him because he's out of the cave. He's usually always high and away. And he's been breeding with a black long fin female. Um, so I might switch him up, try to find him another female, maybe a blue eyed or maybe a red. Um, but right now I'm out of red females of breeding size. Uh, and then I can breed that male I just showed you with his female that's in this tank. And they're probably going to produce a lot more consistent babies and right here I'm getting just a variety of commons and things like that. I think I have one red up here. Uh, it might even be a blue eye in that corner. Not quite an albino, not quite a real nice super red. So the reds I want to more so start line breeding these guys which I'm already doing but I have a couple extras. And you can see his, his uh, nose is a lot shorter. So maybe more of the bushy nose family versus the bristle nose. Uh, same pleco pretty much, but I find the bristles to be much larger on the bristle nose versus the bushy nose. 
Thank you all for watching. Kind of jumped around the fish room today uh, like I always do and I kind of just share what I have going on. Um, but thank you all for watching. If you like this video and you made it till the end, go below in the comments and let me know what you think. Give me some ideas for new content so I can uh, keep shooting videos, keep sharing, but maybe get some new stuff in here. So if you got any good ideas, leave a comment below. And if you like this video, like it. If you're not already subscribed, please go below and subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, check out my website at biancosfish.com. I will see you guys next time.